hello students again uh, this is my second part of right sided no this is my second part of heart failure lecture and in the last one I explained about left sided heart failure and now uh, in the second part I am explaining about right sided heart failure which is also known as core pulmonal now right sided heart failure or core pulmonal it occurs when the right ven ventricle doesn't contract effectively now this causes the blood to back up into the right atrium and the peripheral circulation which leads to peripheral edema and also engorgement of the kidneys and other organs so in right sided heart failure right ventricle is not contracting effectively and this causes the blood to back up into the right atrium and the peripheral circulation which causes peripheral edema and engorgement of the kidneys and, and the other organs now let's go to the next slide which is signs and symptoms of right sided heart failure did we do um, the causes of right sided heart failure I think I didn't make slide for the causes of right sided heart failure um, it's given in the it should it's given in your book but let me review it very quickly now what are the um, causes of uh, causes of right sided heart failure I'm sure I made it uh, well anyhow uh, no the right sided heart failure which is core pulmonal and the oh here it is right it is it's the left side the right sided heart failure core pulmonal uh, the the bullet points on this slide shows you the causes of right sided heart failure and the first cause is left sided heart failure then hypertension age uh, infections heart wall heart valve disorders and then lung disorders uh, PE and COPD so let's see how left sided heart failure contributes to right sided heart failure now left sided heart failure over time will lead to right sided heart failure so if any time you have a patient who has a left sided heart failure you should be thinking that eventually it will affect the patient's right side too in the left sided heart failure fluid is backing up into the lungs and this fluid creates increased pressure in the lungs which is abnormal there should not be a lot of pressure in the lungs the right side of the heart eventually becomes tired from pumping against these high lung pressure because left sided heart failure is already damaged so the all the work goes to right sided heart failure and the right sided heart has to pump harder to work against the high pulmonary pressures over time the patient will experience the right sided heart failure known as core pulmonal so this is how the left side damage re leads to the right sided damage now the second reason which is here is hypertension uh, hypertension heart has to pump harder to force the blood into arteries against higher pressure the heart uh, the walls of heart they thicken and which is popularly known as hypertrophy and it's thicken and it gets stiff so it not only it gets hypertrophy but it also becomes stiff and this causes the heart to pump less blood so hypertension heart has to pump harder to force blood into the uh, arteries against higher pressure and the heart walls they are becoming thick and becoming stiff and this causes the heart to pump less blood now know the difference 
between the two which I'm talking. I'm taking the, I'm saying that the heart has to pump harder to force blood into the arteries, but the same, but at the same time, heart is also pumping less blood. So it's working more hard, but the less blood is coming out. So this is how hypertension will lead to right-sided heart failure. There is something called age. And as with most of the diseases, age also plays a very major role in right-sided heart failure. Uh, there can be um, heart walls become stiff, you know, they, they stiffen naturally with age. Uh, there can be uh, some, uh, uh, some kind of uh, infiltration of some unusual protein, which is not, not normally found in body. And they say these, this unusual protein with time can also infiltrate heart walls, causing them to become more stiff. Uh, infections, which can be uh, in some of the tropical countries, infections which are caused by some parasites can also cause cardiac wall to become stiff. So this is how age infections, they play a role in right-sided heart failure heart valve disorders uh, I don't have to tell you how many valves are there you know it but anytime there is a heart valve disorder it hinders it obstructs obstructs the blood flow out of the heart heart works harder cardiac walls they become thick and in the end the diastolic dysfunction develops which leads to the systolic dysfunction so this is how heart valves also need to be healthy for adequate circulation. Uh, they can be lung disorders. We just learned in, in respiratory lecture, lung disorders. So this is a, now there is famous lung disorders, COPD and PE. Both these can cause very high pressure in the lungs and can lead to right-sided heart failure. Any disease that causes hypoxia will cause the blood pressure in the lungs to go up. And this is, this is what is popularly known as uh, pulmonary hypertension. So any disease that causes hypoxia will cause the blood pressure in the lungs to go, go up. And this is called pulmonary hypertension. So due to these lung disorders PE and COPD there is a very high pressure in the lungs and this is how slowly it's damaging the right side of the heart right side of the heart and leading to right sided heart failure let's go to the next slide sign and symptoms of right sided heart failure uh, there will be enlarged liver so anytime you know if you know your medical terminology it's megaly megaly enlargement so hepatomegaly and splenomegaly so liver and spleen they both can get enlarged so if you have a patient with right-sided heart failure you can see these in that patient why there is hepatomegaly and splenomegaly because the blood is getting backed up into the venous system and when it's getting back up into the venous system on the way it meets liver and spleen and that's how it causes engorgement of these organs um, uh, now there will be epigastric tenderness now liver and spleen they have a capsule around them this capsule does not like to stretch because it is filled with some nerves and it hurts when the nerves are stretched out when the organs become swollen epigastric discomfort and right, right upper quadrant in the abdomen uh, no right upper quadrant tenderness in the abdomen will be seen so epigastric tenderness because as liver and spleen they have a certain capsule around them and this capsule doesn't want like to be stretched because it is filled with nerves and anytime there is something to do with nerves it will be a little painful and tender. So when the organs within these capsule become swollen, become swollen, there is an epigastric, there is epigastric discomfort and uh, right upper quadrant tenderness. Ascites. So you will see, so you will see ascites 
in right-sided heart failure patient. Uh, there is a lot of pressure in the venous system which causes fluid to leak out of the vascular spaces into the abdominal cavity. A uh, second reason for ascites can be that the liver can no longer make albumin like it used to be. So normally albumin, it holds the fluid in your vascular spaces. So when there is no longer enough albumin, uh, the fluid is leaking into the vascular space. And when albumin is low, fluid leaks out of the vascular space into the peritoneal cavity. That's how ascites happens. In, there is increased pr pressure in the venous system, which causes fluid to leak out of the vascular space into the abdominal cavity. So this is how ascites happens. Edema. Uh, I don't need to tell you. You know, all are by this time familiar. Anytime there is a heart failure, the pressure in the venous system causes fluid to leak from the vascular spaces into the tissues. Uh, there will be anorexia, fullness, nausea, because there is congestion of liver and, and intestines. Uh, so that's why there will be a lot of uh, nausea, fullness, and anorexia. JVD, why there would be a JVD? JVD, the blood backs up from the right side of the heart into the venous system or blood cannot empty empty into the right atrium so it backs up into the jugular veins so you see so you see jugular venous distension weight fluid retention so that's why there is a uh, increase in weight and when you have patient with heart failure anytime you have any question the it is uh, big responsibility of the RN to make sure that there is daily weight when they are on the med search for floors and she has to verify it. Uh, nocturia, nocturnal, uh, there is in during the night there is a nocturnal fluid redistribution and reabsorption inside the body during the night and it causes the urge to void at night so that's why uh, there is nocturia in the right side and heart failure. Let's go to the next slide. Tests for right side and heart failure, they are no different from uh, uh, the test for left side and heart failure. Definitely we will do EKG. EKG as before as in left side and heart failure will show heart strain, any enlargement or ischemia. Chest x-ray it will reveal any lung infiltrates or any enlarged heart. BNP, yes, both in both left-sided and heart, right-sided heart failure, BNP will be increased. And then there is echocardiogram. It's the same as left-sided heart failure, and it will ev evaluate the pumping ability of the heart and function of the heart valves. Again, we'll also do PA, uh, pulmonary artery pressure monitoring. Uh, which will show the high pulmonary artery wedge pressure. Um, the treatment, um, uh, the treatment of this. Um, uh, let's go to the next slide first. Treatment for right-sided heart failure. They are no different from the treatment for left-sided heart failure. We want to decrease the workload on the heart. We will. Uh, give diuretics which will decrease the fluid volume throughout the body. We, we can give ACE inhibitors. Uh, NJ2 receptor blockers can be used in place of ACE inhibitors. So both ACE inhibitors and NJ2 uh, will be uh, given to the patient. Now for the purpose of exam, I want you to memorize the ACE inhibitors or NG2 receptor blockers uh, for your, um, you know, all the heart meds. And, and I think I posted a med summary, a very good med summary on the web access too. So you can read it from there also. Uh, uh, beta blockers, vasodilators, during your practice as an RN on the floor, you'll be surprised at how much these drugs become part of your life like diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, vasodilators. 
Now they're also positive inotropic drugs, which will make the heart muscle contract more forcefully, which hopefully will increase cardiac output. Anticoagulants, opioids, what would happen? Again, I'll say opioids, they, release, they relieve the anxiety and workload on the heart, especially with pulmonary hypertension. Lifestyle modifications, heart transplant only when aggressive medical treatments have not been that effective. Uh, complications are same as left-sided heart failure, pulmonary edema, organ failure, and a myocardial infarction. So this is now my next lecture related to the uh, cardiac um, disorders or diseases will be on cardiomyopathy. Um, I am uh, um, cardiomyopathy, but I would also post. I would also be posting a small e-lecture on heart assessment. Okay, thank you.